Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Alright, pack one, pick one. Our rare is not that great. And the uncommons are not amazing either. I'm, of course I'll play Memorial in my black decks if I get it. But it's not the card I want to be first picking. So it's Blink versus Vicious Offering pretty much. And... Uh, you could make a case for either one, but I think Blink is slightly better. If it was Eviscerate, then it would be a lot closer, because I do think Eviscerate is better than Offering. The only deck where Offering is potentially better is the Sapperling deck. Alright, second pack. Got some options. Journey Mage stays on color and is quite good. There's also Alfame Druids, which can lead to some busted draws and even synergizes a little bit, I guess, with Blink, although not really, since... Yeah, I guess there's a situation where it could be useful. Alfame Druid just sets us up for a nice kicker ramp deck, try and get Grow from the Ashes, the Drake that we can kick later, Baloth Gorger, those types of cards. The Shar can be fine, probably at its best in, like, a blue-white self-mill or black-white type deck with a lot of Historic, but I think Elfheim Druid might just be the pick. I do think Elfheim Druid is better than Lanor Elves for what it's worth, so I do rate the Druid quite highly. It doesn't die to Fungal Infection, which is a pretty popular card, and the Kicker is quite relevant in this format. Now a third pack is pretty disappointing, the overall power level is quite weak. Probably just take the Fire Fist in case we do end up Blue-Red Wizards. And that's about it. Quende in white, Drake and Migration in blue-green. So I've got to decide here. I think I'm going Migration. It's such a good card if we can kick it. And I do think Druid is probably slightly better than Fire Fist here as we don't need to rely too much on wizard synergies, which we may or may not get. And I could still backdoor into a sapperling deck if that ends up being open. Pack 5, easy scattering surveyor, surprise it's still here. Probably the best common in the set, no joke. And opens up a lot of doors for potential splashes. Pack 6, Looking at Wizards Retorts, we might not have a ton of Wizards, but even if we just end up blue-green, a 3-mana Counterspell is playable, Four mana is slow enough for it to be good. And I don't see anything else that's great. Like maybe if we end up black, Dark Bargain could be fine, but... Doesn't look like we're headed in that direction. Seventh pick, Blink of an Eye, so blue is wide open. Syncopate also, fine card. Ooh, wow. Well, that's the advantage of Scattering Surveyor. We can now splash this Wrath pretty easily. Otherwise, Spider and Arcane Flight are both fine. Probably would have taken Spider if we didn't have Wrath. But Wrath it is. <laughs> Alright, fine, I'll take the Oath. Just in case we open Teferi. And then I'll maybe play it. Although probably not. Both Befuddle and Candle considerations. Probably just take the Befuddle. Candle does get better in green when we have a bit of ramp with cards like Elfheim Druid. And blue-green otherwise doesn't have a ton of removal, so that's kind of the consideration for taking Candle. Ooh, wow. Twelfth pick Drake. So, blue definitely the place to be. Second color... Hopefully green, but it's potentially still up for grabs. Well, Chain Warlord seems a bit difficult to support here. We've got a good green card in Wild Onslaught, which synergizes with both Elfheim Druid and Migration. Shana could be splashed alongside Wrath, which could be okay with Migration, but I don't have any of the legendary sorceries yet as incentives to splash a bunch of these legendary creatures. Then there's Eviscerate as a great removal spell, and Sheevenfire as a great removal spell. 
and I guess Sapper does a fine green card, but I would take Onslaught over it. So on color card, Onslaught, if I'm gonna take a splash card, I think Eviscerate might be the pick over Sheevan Fire. But I don't know if I want to go four color since we just have the one Surveyor. So end of the day, I think I'll just take the Onslaught and hope to wheel Sapper or maybe Shana in case we end up uh, splashing a few extra white cards. Yeah, hopefully we can pick up Grow from the Ashes to make it easier to splash, but don't want to count on it. I've had multiple drafts in green where I didn't see a single Grow from the Ashes. Well, seems like a nice time to pick up a Hunterland Harbor. Nice bit of mana fixing, and we're not passing up on much. Even if I was splashing Black Settle, the score's pretty hard to cast. And all the green cards are pretty replaceable. All right, I've got options. Couple splashable red cards with Halar and Sheevan Fire, and a nice on-color Divination. And Divination does combo nicely with making mana through Elfame Druids and any other ramp cards we may find along the way. So I'll take a Divination, just a nice safe pick. Don't need to commit to any weird splash cards yet when we don't have the fixing to necessarily play them. Although, now it's kind of getting out of hand. Another Sheevan Fire, fourth pick. Opt is a fine card. But I think I'm probably gonna jump on board the, the red Sheevan Fire train. If we're gonna keep getting good red cards. And Sheevan Fire, while of course better if we're red as one of our primary colors, is still a fine splash card. Five mana to deal four damage. I'll take it. Could use a big finisher, so Thor Elemental fits the bill. So I'm um, blue green as a base, most likely. Maybe splashing a bit of white and a bit of red. Love to see Baloth Gorger. Drake is also fine here, but could use a bit more beef. So I'll go with the Gorger. Another Divination, perfect. So cards I'm hoping to get, Lanor Elves, more Kicker cards, maybe a bit of removal so that we can splash. And another piece of mana fixing, whether it's Scattering Surveyor, Grow from the Ashes, or another Dual Land. Uh, we already have a Befuddle, probably not playing two of them. Cyclops on the splash is not exciting, but it's a consideration if we end up low on creatures. And I already have a Syncopate, so we're kind of a tap-out deck. And I already have a Retort, so I'll, I'll take a Cyclops just in case, I think. Scholar's fine. Nothing I'm gonna play, most likely. I guess Nature Spiral maybe makes a cut. If I end up with some bomb, I want to keep getting back. Alright, so as we've said, hoping for some more ramp. Lanor Elves, Alfheim Druid, Grow from the Ashes. And uh, I did get my wish. This pack has a lot of good cards. There's Surveyor for mana fixing, Migration as a nice kicker card, Sphinx as a great 5-drop, and an Allosaurus as a great 4-drop and kicker card. I think it's Allosaurus followed by probably Surveyor would be my second pick here. Over Sphinx and Migration. Oh wow, Bolas's Clutches. One of the best, if not the best, uncommon. It's competing with like Eldest Reborn and Fight with Fire, which is good company. Zahid. I'll take a Zahid. We don't have a ton of artifacts outside of Surveyor, but even for six mana it's reasonable. And if we do somehow get some other random artifacts, it can be amazing. And what's the other alternative here? Like a Mammoth Spider. And now we're getting all the payoffs. Cloud Reader Sphinx, blue keeps being wide open. 
Our curve might be getting a little chunky, but I don't have a ton of, at 5, so I think it's still the pick over Deep Freeze. <laughs> wow. A fifth pick in Bolas' clutches, so we're literally the only blue drafter at the stable. I might not need to splash Raf after getting double clutches. There's my grow six pick, finally, a bit of ramp. Well, our deck is coming together nicely. This pack, not great. I could take like a random artifact for Zahid. Maybe a shield of the realm. Seems unlikely. Oh boy. Do I want another Sphinx? Yeah, like Tetsuka's not doing a whole lot for me. It's nice with migration, but that's about it. Oh wow. And yeah, both the Sphinx and a Memorial Wield. I think we're literally the only blue drafter at this table. Um, I think we'll have enough playables where I might prefer Memorial in case we flood out. Although Sphinx is so good. And I'm probably not playing the Fire Fists at this point, so yeah, I'll take another Sphinx, why not? I could splash Wrath. It's kind of cute with Imbolos' clutches being able to play that at instant speed. So I'm not sure yet about splashing Wrath, but I don't think I'm splashing reds. A little bit light on two drops, perhaps. Late game looks good. Still need to cut one card here. Could be the Wild Onslaught, since we're not really that type of deck. Don't have a lot of early board presence to leverage the Onslaught, only ended up with Sapperling Migration. So I could see Onslaught being the cut. Like, our game plan here is pretty simple. Play Cloud Reader Sphinx and then steal the opponent's best card in play. We're not trying to go wide and get people with our pump spell. We just want to interact a little bit with Blink. Draw some cards with Divination. We've got two counter spells with Retort and Syncopates. And then we just get him with Clutches. And Zahid is fine as a 6 mana, 5 6, but every now and then we can tap the Surveyor. And then 17 lands, seems fine. Favoring blue over green. 8 and 8 might still be the way to go. Because I do need double green for Gorsha and Allosaurus. Yeah, we'll go 8 and 8. And Surveyor can help too. Looks fine. Might have to blink this knight. So, land 4 from Grow from the Ashes lets me play Sphinx if I draw another land next turn. Scholar probably gets tapped down by Trapper, we take 6, but gotta start somewhere. Keeping a Pertort is not really an option here. The only card that rewards me for blocking knights, I guess there's two cards, both Fungal Infection and Charge, which they can both have. Yeah, the fact that they're attacking with both kind of makes me want to trade here instead. I don't know, it's a close call.
All right, I guess it didn't matter. So now grow from the ashes. If I draw land, I can clutches, which would be pretty effective. Or play Sphinx at the very least. Although I'm gonna be at five, so I might be dead anyway. If I play Drake, can block Trapper or Knight, and then land lets me Sphinx, but if I don't land, it's pretty bad. So not a tough choice. I'll just run out to Drake. And then hope to draw land for Sphinx. I guess I'm just dead now. Can blink one of their creatures, still take lethal. Grow into blink also doesn't do it. Ah, GG's. Yeah, I'll place Migration now. Keep up Syncopate on 3 when they're more likely to have something relevant. And then late game we've got both Allosaurus and Blink we can kick if it gets to that point. It's good enough for me. Yeah, I'll play Allosaurus. And then we can just blink into blink to keep up the pressure. Hope they can kill this. It's too bad. So that did buy them a lot of time. I would have liked a nice blink of an eye target, but I guess I'll settle for my opponent not doing anything. Spore Swarm, sure. Only blocking with one token. I could befuddle here, it's kind of weak. But if I draw a land, I can still Divination. Now nah, let's just... Let the trade happen, divination, and then see what we draw. Snapper. We were out of counter spells anyway, but yeah, snapper is one thing we can steal. So, potentially an issue. So this gives Vigilance and Trample. I mean, I'm not going to be attacking my opponent on the way back anyway, so I'm fine if they want to attack with Vigilance, and then I'll blink the blade after. Don't think it matters too much. Can cycle befuddle. I'll hold it for now. Can also clutch the blade here if I want to. For now, I'm happy just bouncing it around a little bit.
probably gonna end up stealing the blade. And then I don't really want to trade away my uh, surveyor or token just yet, because I need them to then hold off the snapper. I'll happily use Befuddle if I get a chance. Rona. Sure. Stealing Rona is also an option. But not an exciting one. If I steal the blade, it's gonna be three mana to move it. Yeah, I guess that's the play. And then what do I equip? Sapperling, I think. It's a little weaker to like a fungal infection, but that probably gets me either way. Arona attacking too. So yeah, the plan is to double block Snapper and then take three, I guess. Seems fine. Can attack with a Druid and still tap it for mana? Hmm. Alright, it's only fair. And the fact that we held on to Befuddle might be pretty key. So what I would have liked to do is, of course, block the Worm and then Befuddle after blocking with Thorn Elemental, but then I'm dead. So we will be forced to trade. And then I can either trade for Rona, befuddle a token, or I can befuddle Rona and eat a token and still have my Elfame Druid. In the case where I trade and befuddle a token, I'll be at one facing two tokens. I'll need to draw two blockers with my divination, which is definitely not a guarantee. I could also chum the worm, block Rona, but that seems worse, because then we still need to deal with the worm. So I think I do block like this, because I don't want them drawing with Rona if it does come to a board stall, and then just hope to get lucky and draw a couple creatures here. It's one of them. So a Sphinx first, then Divination. And those don't do it. Alright, we're still in it. Uh oh. It's Yargle time. And then, where do I move the blade? Probably the Arcanists. Still that to removal spell. 
so can feel too safe here. Alright, so if I move the blade to the scholar, it tramples for five. Opponent has two jumping sapperlings. So that still tramples over for three, three from the Sphinx. But it does force him to jump with both. So, yeah, gotta go for it. All right, that was a nail biter. Somehow managed to get rid of a turtle and uh, opponent's forebear's blade ended up being quite useful. All right, I've got a two lander with an Alfheim druid. So if we draw another forest, I can play Gorger. If not, Island would be great for divination. Could be a Shivan fire. It's unfortunate. All right, just gotta draw an island or a hinterland harbor. Our two landers are not working out today. to discard. These are the toughest decisions, because if you do somehow get back into the game, this decision could definitely matter. Don't think Wizard's Retort is going to do much for me. I'm going to be behind on board, trying to climb back. It's double blue. I don't have any blue sources yet. Hopefully we can draw an island now. Atlas is going to speed up the clock significantly. Is it too little too late? Probably yes. Probably better off casting Befuddle over Divination at this point. And I get to keep up Syncopate. Do I trump this turn already? Yeah, because if I do play Gorger, I can maybe block Scholar, but I might not get the chance to later. Now nah, let's befuddle now. Yeah, that's probably game over. Jeez. All right, this hand's functional.
play land first to play around syncopates. I'll hold the migration. Could play kick migration now. Or I can keep the card draw going with divination. Or play Sphinx. Out of all these cards, getting the migration counter is maybe not the worst. I guess I'll attack first. I think I would rather have them counter migration than Sphinx. And if they don't have anything, that's fine too. Alright, blink of an eye, a perfect answer to the demon token from right that they'll eventually get. So we can keep attacking with our tokens, play Sphinx. Could also play this kicked, but there's nothing worth fighting. Sahid seems perfect when we have Skittering Surveyor in play. Could have also kept a land afterwards, so I could go Divination into Sahid. And I don't want to risk Divination not drawing a land and being unable to play Zahid. Nothing to get back for Whisper at the moment. Play this kicked. Could have also done this end of turn and then kicked Allosaurus to kill Whisper, but this is fine. I guess if I want to kick Blink, I'll need to uh, tap both blue sources, which doesn't leave much mana for anything else. That's still fine. If I draw lands, great. If I don't, that's fine. Could be worth it to send everyone, to be honest. But we'll just send Zahid for now. A nice one-for-one one answer for migration. Don't have a use for my sapperlings, but my opponent being black-green might. Uh-oh. Well, Helm of the Host is unbeatable, so I better steal it with Imbolus's Clutches. So I got a draw towards one. I don't think I can afford to keep up Wizard's Retorts. This 
So Surveyor lets me play Zahid, but it's not really a long-term solution to the helm. Unless I can just kill him in four attacks. So maybe the play is Surveyor this turn, keep up retorts, and then next turn... I can... Uh, play Zahid. Next turn divination, look for that clutches. Yeah, it is true that I will be the ones getting the copies from Helm if it's on the opponent's creature still. I think that's how it works, but of course we would want to put it on Zahid eventually. Now I could also kick this Allosaurus to kill Sapper, but they can just pay the 5 easily. So I think we're still looking for clutches more than anything. Can I afford to attack here? I don't think I can. 4 turns, next turn I'm taking... A lot of damage. Yeah, it's not gonna work out. Yeah, the one three is slightly better at blocking than Druid, but this tapping for two mana could be relevant with the Allsaurus is what I was thinking. All right, there we go. Fight sapperlings with sapperlings. Can I afford to attack? Six, seven, eight. Probably. All right, and that does it. Looks fine. Double clutches, a little soon for those, but Surveyor does help. I think I'll keep up Syncopate. Counter maybe like the 3-2 Wizards. Alright, so do I want my Zahid getting countered? Not really. I do want to hit my land drops too. I mean, 
Either way, Divination and Zahid are cards I do want to resolve. Now let's give him a Divination. I'm not going to attack. If they have a Trickster, I don't want to lose Surveyor for free. Alright, now what? Give them a Sphinx. Can go Migration plus Arcanists. I guess I don't hate that. I'm, I'm, I don't have to kick this Migration this game. I'm fine with just a 2 mana 1. Kinda hold the fort. If they let it resolve, fine. If not, that's fine too. Got enough expensive spells in hand that I just want to get stuff in play. Alright, that's perfect. One syncopate down, now I can probably afford to attack. They might still have a Sheevan Fire in hand, that's holding priority. That's fine. Perfect time for Zahid. Double Wizard Lightning? Wow. Alright, I wasn't expecting that, but can be too upset with that exchange. Let's play Thorn Elemental. If they ever play something worse stealing, we've got two shots at it. If they want to trade for my Thorn Elemental, I'll take that trade. Must be nice still having double clutches in hand. Yeah, there's no need for me to do anything here. Just attack. actually wanted to trade there, but accidentally clicked through it. But I don't think it's gonna matter too much. Just make two lethal threats. Fine hands. Syncopate just gave it all away. I'll take the three. Fine with the trade, or I can take it and then Gorger can block it next turn. Stronghold Confessor, not the easiest to block if I do trade. But if they eviscerate next turn or Blessed Light, I might regret taking three. Yeah, I think I gotta trust in my late game and just preserve my life total as much as possible. And 
And then if we can pass with all three instants up, that's going to be nice. If they don't play anything, I'll just blink it end of turn. Alright, we'll need a bit of action. Can't really attack, because then they just take four and hit me back for four. There's a Blessed Light. Keep up double blue. Make them respect the wizard's retorts. I see. Well, turns out they had both eviscerate and blessed light. Well, I can't see the forests through the trees here. One card that we sadly didn't pick up was a uh, Crows and Druids. Kicked Crows and Druid is a nice way to kind of come back from a game where you take a bit of early damage. I'll remind you, this is the same draft where people suggested playing 18 lands. So as it turns out, variance is a thing and it strikes both ways. Oh well, had some fun games in there. A few too many decided by land situations. All right. Wanna thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.